We'd like to acknowledge the first peoples of this land, which are the Gabrielina Tongva, and we honor their ancestors, and we come together and bless this podcast. We invite the ancestors to be here with us, and we know that everything's going to flow and be perfect. Aho and amen. Aho and amen. Aho amen. Amen. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for inviting us. Can you guys introduce yourselves? Okay, I'll start because I'm the elder. I'm Jenny Estrada, also known as Sister Weeping Willow. And my name is Cynthia Ruiz, and my Cherokee name is Lion Mother. Oh, yo soy Yaki. Yay! <laughs> and then we have Jesse here, too. Yo soy Yaki. Fabulous. Okay, first question. Mm -hmm. How did you guys meet? So what I like to say is that we met through divine intervention by the ancestors. But she'll tell you the real story. (laughs) We met on a a court. No. We uh I worked in a beauty shop and I'm a uh, Kindle person and I would sit and read my Kindle because I love it, right? And she asked one of the girls, what does that lady do besides read Kindle? She just, <laughs> she's, she's the esthetician here. And so one day she made an appointment and um, she became my client and she became my friend, but first she kind of scared me. Well, not scared me, but she said, you're a healer, aren't you? And I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> I did. And from that point on, uh, we became very dear friends. Why did you tell her that you weren't a healer? I did, I never told anybody I was because uh, I didn't fully and I embraced it. But um, I don't normally tell people I am. You know, I, I think it should happen through your reputation. Mm-hmm. And there's so many charlatans around that say, you know, they're this and they're that, and they're just um, can we cuss. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I encourage it. Okay. Because, <laughs> right, you know, they'll cut me off. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, and they're bullshit. And that right. bothers me because um, so many people, that's their first step to they, they think they're going to a spiritual journey and right. sometimes they're being fleeced. Right. Actually, we can jump into that. Um, Good. Right. Because I, I left you guys some questions about um, just kind of like the BS of mm-hmm. like healing and like um, we can start with the the rituals and like the medicine that's being a little bit exploited mm-hmm. and being sold to people. Oh, uh, well, I'll just start real fast and she'll yeah. jump in. We went to uh, El Sereno 90032. Mm-hmm. So um, we had gone to some kind of uh, a spiritual thing. There was a bunch of people there, and there was these three women. It was it was a panel of people. I think there was maybe five. There was three women, and there was two men. And so, and, and most of the crowd there was Latino. Mm-hmm. So these three women, I just had a bad feeling about them. And I go, let's sit in the front row because I can tell then, you know, so— I could say, oh, I just thought, man, these ladies aren't for real. So the first thing she says, we can cure diabetes and cancer. Oh, my and God. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no. And so Cynthia goes, oh, yeah, they're just a little less. So then, oh, no. Yeah. And, and then they were giving me like a really hard look because they knew I could read them. I was so angry. Why do you do that? Why do you do that to our people? Right. And everybody was like, yeah. I have diabetes, you know, help me. And, oh, and you know, and then they want, she wanted to give them uh, ayahuasca. And I was like, oh, my God, these people are, they're just eating this up because people just want a cure. Right. You know, how dare they do that? And I was so goddamn mad. And then, uh, so that was my story on it. So go ahead, Cynthia. I'm sorry. So first of all, I have to look at what are healers. Right. And so there's many different words that they call healers, right. shamans, medicine women, medicine men and women. And so, you know, for me, healers are something that's generational. 
It's right. passed down by generation. Like, like if you're a shaman or a healer or a medicine woman, you don't come in and say, I'm a shaman. Right. Like Jenny's a shaman, but she will never tell you that because it's it's something that people, it's like an honor that you wear. Right. And like she's sixth generation healer. Mm-hmm. And so what's happening now, I was actually on this uh, radio show and I was with this woman that she's like, oh, I'm a shaman. So I said, really, tell me about that. And and she was a white woman. Um, and she says, oh, well, I took a workshop, you know, in Sedona and now I'm a shaman. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, no, don't work like that. <laughs> and so it irritates me because this is sacred right. stuff. And when they exploit it for monetary gain it's one of the issues i have and i see that a lot with plant medicine right we know ayahuasca is really popular yes. but ayahuasca is a tool that medicine people use yeah. so ayahuasca in and of itself is good but it's not a recreational drug right and so so many people think it's oh you know i'm going to take ayahuasca and i'm going to you know you know see god and everything's going to be great right. but it's so it, the exploitation of the sacred spirituality right. is really gets under my skin yeah. however Same. i think that you know there's a lot behind it this is generational stuff and this is stuff that's passed you know the ways are passed from generation to generation and then even if you have it in your blood, you still have to study. You have to become an apprentice. This this stuff takes years to learn. Right. And there's so many layers like healers. You can you can have be somebody that specializes in plant medicine. You can have a healer that specializes in energy work. Jenny's also a Reiki master. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of different healing modalities. And so I, both of us really get upset when people exploit the sacredness of what's being done of the, between the shaman. And, and the medicine people or the curanderas, whatever term you want to use. Right. I've never heard of curandera. Ah. <laughs> we went to a school for like Harry Potter people. What? <laughs> no. Tell me we more. Went to, no, we, went to, we, went to, we went to the University of New Mexico mm, okay. to learn uh, spiritual stuff. Um, and it was quite interesting. And they had people from all over the Americas they're teaching different classes. Um, I personally have taken many classes. Mm -hmm. um, And my medicine is Reiki, and I have hot hands. So, uh, Can you explain a little bit what Reiki is? Reiki is, an you can move energy. Uh, Sometimes when people come to me, um, we have chakras, you know, Mm -hmm. and... When you're not in tune, you're not in balance, is your chakras are blocked. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have to go in there and unblock them. Uh, because if you don't, then you, you're chueco. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> crooked, right, you know? Like Jesse. Your energy's off. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Um, so uh, it's interesting because we were just talking about that in the car, how he yeah. feels a little off. So. Well, there's a lot of changes happening. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was telling her that we just moved. Oh, so. yeah, yeah. And even though it's not far, it's far because you got to move the stuff from one place to another, right? Yeah. yeah. It's a transition. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. quantum physics tells us we're all energy. Yeah. Yes. And so when you understand that, you understand a lot of the spirituality. Mm-hmm. And she was mentioning about like the chakras. That. The chakras are really just energy points in your body mm-hmm. and that they have to be aligned. Mm. And so if they're not aligned, <laughs> you call in. A Reiki master, and she she doesn't even touch you when she's you know actually realigning your energy. Mm-hmm. And so, really, you know, for for me and my beliefs and the energy, it's really you know understanding that there's different dimensions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so for me, there's we're in the physical world, we're yeah. spiritual beings having a a, a, a human experience mm-hmm. in this physical world, but there's also other dimensions. You know, my belief is when you transition and you die you go into the non-physical world Mm -hmm. you know a lot of medicine people believe there's many more dimensions right so it's kind of understanding how that works how energy works and um that's why you have people like reiki masters that can manipulate and align the energy yeah 
I believe, I totally believe that like when you die, it's just like energy because energy never dies. Right. So you're exactly. still there, but yeah. just like not in a physical form. And, or, or um, maybe you might come back as a different form. Right. You could. The most beautiful thing that I have ever experienced is crossing an individual over when they have passed mm-hmm. in front of me. And you can feel the love. You can feel the energy. You can feel that they're afraid to go on. And you have to tell them, come on, it's okay. And when you're at that point, uh, all your relatives come. The room, like we're four right here, it would be like 4,000. And you can feel that the room gets filled with something. And it's energy, Mija. And so when you're crossing a person over you, we open a window so that they can go. Yeah. And I, it's, I, I just, cro- well, not just in March, I crossed my uncle over. Mm. And uh, we crossed my father over when he uh, crossed over. And it's so beautiful. And it is so um, soothing to the people around. It's not, eh, you know, people are, you know, scared and stuff. Yeah. You make it beautiful because that's. Everybody comes in one way, and we're going to go out one way. Yeah. Now, have That's, you guys been there when somebody made their transition? No, yes. I was just going to ask, yeah. like, what is that like? It's a beautiful experience. Oh I've God, had the, yeah. the honor of uh, being there with two of my aunts, holding their hand as they took their last breath. Mm. But I wasn't afraid. Mm-hmm. I wasn't. It's, it, it's actually a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. And you get to see goodbye, and you see their last breath, and you, you realize, um, like for me being Cherokee, we don't have a word for goodbye in mm-hmm. our language because we know we'll see that spirit again. Mm-hmm. So it's like until we meet again. Right. Yeah. So beautiful. I've, you said you. Yeah. When I was a senior in high school, my grandma passed away in front of us. Mm-hmm. And it oh, was okay. A, so you have seen it. Yeah. And I, I was very, very close to my grandma. So mm-hmm. it was a very powerful experience. And she was in a coma for a few days. So to. To feel it was like an instant change in like temperature, the energy of the room, like everything, everything. When they said, "Okay, we're we're gonna unplug her now," and then it happened, and you, the sound of her last breath is like ingrained in my memory. Like, like I can <sighs> smell the room when I think about it. Yeah. It's, it's very, um, I don't know. It's just a very vivid memory, and those those few days, you know, were very like influential into the my development as an adult man. And um, a few years ago, a really good friend of mine, I also witnessed the same thing with him. He was also in a coma. And it it's doesn't, I don't think it, it gets easier to experience with a loved one, but in a sense, it is very relieving for, yeah. you know, for yeah. the, the people that are watching someone yeah. in pain and endure this. Right, absolutely. Yeah. But when you help them leave and their family members are there, It feels so beautiful because what you've done is such a beautiful task. The most intimate times in your life are when you're born and when you cross over. Everything else is a lovely thing in between, Mm -hmm. but those two things are so intimate. And to be shared with people that you love, it it was just lovely. And uh, actually, one of my cousins told me, if I go before you, Juanita, will you cross me over and go, yeah, no problem. I got you, I got you covered. But it, it's really beautiful, and you shouldn't be afraid of it. Yeah. And I think the, the issue in the United States is that we don't have a good relationship with death. No. Right. And a lot of the indigenous and native people, we get the fact that it's a cycle. Because if you look at nature, you know, nature runs in cycles. You have your four seasons. You know, we have four directions that we pray in. We have four elements. So there's a certainty in the cycles of nature. Mm-hmm. Whereas, so we're very, we're okay with the transitioning and death. In the U.S. society, we don't even want to get old, let alone die. Right, right. So yeah. we don't really have a good relationship with death in that process, which is really unfortunate because then the aftermath of the grieving process is nonlinear and right. people don't understand mm-hmm. it. Yeah. So they shut down or don't want to talk about it. Yeah. That's so true. Like and a- it also because I think a lot of it has to do with like the religion that's practiced here. And a lot of it, it's scary because I'm just, when you're saying that, I'm thinking about when I was in Catholic school and like how I was so scared of just the devil and like what was going to happen. And like hearing you say that, it's like, 
I'm so glad that I'm I'm not in like a specific religion. I'm more of like a spiritual person now. And you know, for us, they said, you know, are you religious or spiritual? And we believe in nature because nature doesn't lie. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Man true. can lie. Man can turn a situation into (laughs) something else, but nature will never lie to you. Yeah. It won't. And so it doesn't mean we believe in the creator. I believe in a creator. Yeah, same. Yeah, but I believe in nature because she will never lie to us. Mm -hmm. Never. That's so true. And that was one of the reasons why we wrote the book, Sacred Ceremony uh, and Rituals for Today's World, because we were having a lot of young, younger people, especially the Gen Z and the millennials, come to us and say, we know you practice ceremony. What does that look like? Yeah. Yeah. And so for us, it's, you know, a lot of people that I talk to, a lot of the younger people say that they don't, they're not attached to organized religion. Mm-hmm. And I'm not criticizing any religion, but I'm spiritual. And so for me, what I'd like to do is with the book we're giving people a menu this is a menu of tools in your tool chest do you want to do um, ceremony this is how you do it do you want to do use rituals Uh, for me i develop my spiritual practice and every single day i do three things i start off in the morning with my gratitude list then i throughout the day i pray and meditate i like to say prayer is talking to the creator and ancestors meditation is listening Mm -hmm. so you know encouraging people to develop their spiritual practice, whatever that looks like to them. Right. So with the book, we put it all out there and let the reader and the audience pick and choose what works in their life because everybody has their individual journey. Right. But we want to make sure that everything that you do is done with good intention Mm -hmm. because anything can be light and anything can be dark. We are not dark. My thing, when I wake up, my auntie told me, when you wake up, Juanita, laugh. I go, why? (laughs) (laughs) Smile and laugh. Giggle. Mm. Because that's infectious. And all day long, if you smile, smiles cost nothing. Yeah. And when you smile at somebody that you don't even know, you know they're going to smile back unless there's something really wrong with them. Right. And then you tell them, go to hell. <laughs> but but the inner but laughing is the energy right, right? Yes. Yeah. when you laugh you feel lighter yeah. and you feel happier it's true you know so true. it's it's um, something that I think is important because I believe that life is meant to be fun yeah. You know, we go, we get caught up in the negativity and the drama, and I have just turned the news and you go crazy, right? So to me, it's like, how can I have a spiritual, you know, practice that keeps me grounded Mm -hmm. and keeps me, you know, irregardless of what's going on around me, keep me happy, whole, and complete? And my mantra is, I'm blessed and grateful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every day. It doesn't matter what time you call her. Hi, Cynthia. Are you. B and G, that's what I tell her. <laughs> Blessed and grateful. And guess what? You know, the more gratitude I practice, having that attitude of gratitude and, and being grateful for my blessings, the more blessings I get. I yeah. mean, I'm blessed. I have an amazing life. I'm not saying I don't have challenges, mm-hmm. but it's the way I approach things. Yeah. And so, you know, having that attitude of, of being blessed and grateful, it just really makes life fun and easy and you know i appreciate all the experiences of good and bad mm-hmm. because i believe all the challenges are there to teach me a lesson Ooh, yeah it's like the power of perspective it, i was yeah. just about to say yeah. that it's all about perspective and yes. like how you see the world and like you know you can see it in the dark light or you can see it just like in a better way where you're more positive and mm-hmm. you're blessed and grateful and I was waiting for you to say that. I know that's your <laughs> my <laughs> that's, mantra. Yeah. <laughs> and what's yours, Jenny? <laughs> FTW. <laughs> no, no mine is um, what? Oh, Moss Groovy. Ooh. You were saying that today. I do always yeah. say that. I sorry, and what, what does that mean to you? Yeah. It what does like that mean? The best. Like groovy is you know because. I'm old school, right? And Groovy was like, eh, you know? And Moss Groovy is like the best. Yeah. Yeah, so that, you know, yeah. Ya se acabó el pinche pelo, Moss Groovy. <laughs> and, and what do you get? Like What's that. your ma- mantra? You know what? I don't have a mantra yet, which is, I came up with that question, but like, I don't even have one. But I always do try to feel grateful. Mm. I don't know if I, if I'm, if I necessarily like, 
you know what I do? I do think I'm blessed, but I do feel grateful. Whenever I'm feeling down, I, I just know that I have to be grateful for what I have. And like, you know, I feel very lucky and privileged to be here. And I like, you know, to be with you. And oh, I, I just feel like, too, go Jesse, go Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like it's not so bad, especially when you have a partner that like, you know, supports you and like loves you. And even though I feel like, same, I feel like I can get stressed out and like it overwhelms me. Like I have to like take some steps back and remind myself that I'm grateful. Beautiful. Yeah. Yay. I don't think I have a mantra so much, but I have a friend, a close friend who he's actually been on the podcast. He says something that makes me laugh all the time. But the older I get, I kind of understand. He's a little older than me. So he says, he says, it is what it is and not what it ain't. (laughs) (laughs) That is so cool. (laughs) Yeah. It it always makes me laugh because perspective is is a powerful component of that. Because you could you could take that and you could still be negative, but if if you have the kind of like the wherewithal to be like okay, like I'm gonna I'm gonna pursue happiness despite the circumstances or the stresses. I'm gonna choose to laugh and be funny and be lighthearted. And then yeah, it is what it is, and now it ain't. And sometimes you can't. Okay, yeah, I, we both said we grew up Catholic. The one prayer that always <laughs> stuck with me was. <sighs> I think it's the Lord's Prayer. Our Father? No, no. The Hail Mary? No, I can't. I see I'm a bad Catholic for this. But basically the, the one that's like, God give me the, the serenity to accept So the, the things. serenity prayer. Yeah, the serenity prayer. We used to say that all the time. So it's about acceptance. It's about acceptance. And then he says, give me the courage to change the things that I can. The wisdom to know the difference. And the wisdom to know the difference. We, I used to say it all the time in the high school. Um but that one was always pretty powerful to me. That, you said that in Catholic school? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> my bro- I learned it from my brother because he's an priest. AA. <laughs> so, so, they, so the serenity prayer is, is, is something that's very important. It's yeah. like, you know, acceptance. And not trying to change things, change mm-hmm. people, change yeah. circumstances. Because a lot of times, you know, pe- we try to control the other person. So that's yes. really not acceptance. And people get into relationships and like, okay, they have an idea of what the, their partner should be. So they try to make you fit mm-hmm. that image mm-hmm. in their mind. There is this prayer that we, I used to go to a Native American Catholic church. The only Native American Catholic church in the Los Angeles Archdiocese. And our priest was a lovely man, Father Tom. And he, he when you start, before his homily, and you start, when we start the thing, it's, oh, no, it's at the very end. Lord, I am not worthy that you come under my roof. Speak, but the I words of that. I didn't say that. I said, Lord, I am worthy. <laughs> <laughs> I told him. And you're lucky to know me. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, I used to sit in the front. Um, uh, holy angels of the deaf. But the priest knew, and I told him, I can't say I am not worthy. Mm-hmm. And he goes, what are you going to say? I go, I'm going to say I am worthy because we are worthy. Yeah. You know, it, once we say we're not worthy, well, then what? Shit, we're nothing. Yeah. But no. Yeah. In, in, in the creator's eyes, yes, we are worthy or else we wouldn't be here right now. Yeah. So you're going to have to change that. You have to go talk to somebody in Rome. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Um, I was going to follow back um, up with ceremony. Uh, uh, why do you guys think that ceremony is important? Well, you can go first. So for me, what ceremony does in my life, it helps me stay grounded. Because we are in a complicated world where there are a lot of stress, a lot of people are feeling anxious. Right. You know, I found out there's a new anxiety that Gen Z is suffering from. They're, they have anxiety because of, of climate change. Mm-hmm. You know, they're so worried about So everybody's worried about everything. And so back to the serenity prayer, you know, there's certain things we can't change. So having the ceremony, it allows me to pray in community, it allows me to connect with my ancestors, and that act actually helps keeps me grounded and sane. And I feel that it connects our community. Yes. Because yeah. once we come together, and you have been to our ceremony, mm-hmm. um, once people come in, 
a lot, you know, I, most of people are like, what is going to happen here when they come in? And, and it's, we're so, I, I think we're so welcoming right. and that we want you to feel like you belong there. It's not a, a club where only, a, it's inclusive. Right. We're not, what is that other one? Not inclusive. Exclusive. Exclusive. Mm -hmm. We are inclusive and we want people to feel that when they come. And we want them to realize that everything that we do in a ceremony is just about nature. Yeah. You know, we're not calling anybody out. We don't care what you are, what color you are, what you look like. When you're in our, when you're there for a full moon ceremony, you belong there. You're part of us. Yeah. And, and you take something with you when you go. There is a piece of us, us being the collective of everybody there. You take that. And you know what? There is no way you can't take it with you because it was given in love. Mm -hmm. And so I think when people leave, everybody that goes to it is affected one way or another. Yeah. And, and then I, we pray in circle. Yeah. And circle is important because it shows that everybody's equal. Ooh, right. Yeah, you know, like it doesn't matter circuit. what my job title is, it doesn't matter right. anything. When we're in ceremony in circle, everybody's equal and everybody's right. the same. Doesn't, I'm tall, so you know, it doesn't matter how tall you are, <laughs> short you are, we're all the same. Yeah, mm -hmm. tall. <laughs> Sorry, Judge, you're not tall. <laughs> Don't break that news to her. She doesn't know. <laughs> Don't tell me that. Okay, um, okay so I, I know you guys have accomplished a lot. What are you guys doing right now currently? Like, where are you guys focused at? Okay, uh, well, I retired from uh, corporate America 20 something years ago mm -hmm. and I retooled myself and I thought I you know what do I want to do when I grow up yeah and I've always had um spirituality in me uh it wasn't taught to us it was just the way we lived mm -hmm. I didn't think I thought everybody lived that way but I found out later you don't mm -hmm. um and so I became a Reiki master because some email kept coming to my thing and saying, you know, Reiki. And I thought, what the hell is this? And I kept deleting it, <laughs> deleting it, deleting it. So like six months, eight months later, I said, I wonder what this is. So I, I went on Google, what's Reiki? And I went, oh, okay. So uh, I became an esthetician. I was in human resources and I worked on people's benefits, oh, okay. their money, right? Yeah. So then I went to work in people's bodies. So I was an esthetician. Then I said, oh, I think I need to be a masseuse. So then I went to masseuse school. So I'm certified mm. in both. And then Reiki came along. And I thought, what the hell is this? And I didn't know they had Reiki classes all over. I went to some place out there close to Ventura. And I used to have to drive every Sunday. And I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> every Sunday I would drive over there. And I thought... Then somebody told me, oh, there's a, some place in Pasadena. <laughs> Why didn't somebody tell me? But I went there because, oh, so I the teacher goes, oh, how did you learn about my class? And I said, well, you know, all the emails you sent me. She goes, I don't send out emails. And I thought, she's lying. So I went home <laughs> and I went on to, you know, where you get the sent mail. Yeah. There was nothing in my mailbox. It was a miracle. Nothing about her class. How did that happen? So that was a divine thing that happened to me. Mm -hmm. And when I went, the first time I went to my Reiki class, I thought, this is a bunch of crap. I don't <laughs> believe in this like energy healing stuff. And I was like m rolling my eyeballs and stuff. And I, the first class, I was like, mm. the second class, boom. And so the lady tells me real quick, I'm sorry. Uh, she goes, no, no. She goes, take all the time. Okay, you want. she goes, well, um, we have two hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you a healer? And the only other person that ever said that to me was her. And I said, no. And because I was like mad, you know, and she goes, oh. So we had to do something and we had, it's touching, right? So there was mm -hmm. this young man that was my partner. God, no, he was. So I had my hands behind his back and he goes, ow. And I thought, what's wrong with him? <laughs> God damn kid, little weenie. <laughs> you know, and he goes, oh, you're burning me. And I thought, and my teacher comes over. She goes, let me see your hands. And she said, I felt like I did something wrong, right? And I go, why? <laughs> she goes, let me see your hands. And I went like this. And they were like tomatoes. Oh, no. Wow. And she goes, teacher goes, are you a healer? I said, no. And I just didn't. So I never said anything to her until a couple of classes after. 
I said, well, actually, I'm sixth generation healer in my family. <laughs> <laughs> sixth generation woman healer. She goes, oh, my God. So then after that, I was her uh, partner. Okay. Yeah. Um, how, how did you... How did your your familiar his, your fa- familial history with healing uh, inform your experience with Reiki? Well, I say that is my medicine mm-hmm. because everybody like my medicine is prayer and and Reiki. Some people are plant people; they do plant medicine. Right. Some people. Um, they can do so many different things. But for me, I knew that once I had my atonements, it came out in my hands. So I have hot hands. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I knew that everything that I had felt through all my life was to, I knew I needed to work with people. I didn't know how, mm-hmm. but I just knew I needed to. And it was kind of after I thought about it. Here I worked in corporate America, and I just did people's benefits. And now the benefits is that I'm working on their bodies, yeah. you know? <laughs> Body, uh, spirit, body, and mind. And it felt so right. Mm-hmm. And I think when something feels right with you, you know it. Mm-hmm. And we have to learn to accept those feelings because we want to say no that's not this no it's not that but you have to learn to trust yourself and i trust myself with that yeah. well then why did you tell me no when i asked you if you were a healer because, <laughs> because i didn't i don't you know i never tell people that because i just felt like you know no no because i don't say that i i you I, you know it's like saying oh look at uh, yeah. My badge, and I, I will. Flashy about yeah, it. Yeah, and I don't do that. Yeah, and I just thought, well, how does she know? Because I didn't do anything special. I guess you know? it's like if you know, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I felt it. Yeah, and she did. She goes, I felt it, and I went, oh, okay. It's inevitable. Yeah. Yes. I, For you, people who are in tune with themselves yeah. as well, you know, you do have talk. very hot hands. <laughs> yeah. She. she she, you're burning my face. Yeah. She touched me to bless me at the the moon at the full moon ceremony, yeah. and I did tell her. I said something about your touch was like it, it reminded me of of my grandmother. The, yeah, the warmth that reminded me of like it was like love. Yeah, it, it was it was very thank you complicated uh, like series of emotions and feelings. And I get that from a lot of people, yeah. you know, um, and usually. Uh, many times I'll ask for your forehead Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that I'm giving you that blessing. That's the highest blessing I can give you. Mm -hmm. It's really incredible because it's, it's not like you, you weren't moving or anything. You just literally stationary, just placed your hands on me. Yeah. And I was like, Oh wow. That's, it's like just, it's powerful. We felt so good after we left the ceremony. Like we were just so like happy and to energy, like it made sense. It felt yeah. right. Yeah, you know? it made sense. It felt very like tribal, mm-hmm. and I feel like I don't know if everybody feels like that. Maybe it just has to do with like our background and our ancestors. But the tribal feeling, the collective, is right. very fulfilling, and it's hard to it's hard to knock. It's hard to like deny that it feels good. It yeah. feels it feels yeah. very. You feel included. Yeah. Yes. Right. Feel, it's very inclusive. Oh, and that's like, beautiful. It was such Thank a good you. feeling, and you guys provided that. Yeah. And going back to where how we met, I think, you know, because Jenny and I come from very different worlds. Wow. And so I that's why I said, where I started, I do believe the ancestors and creator put us together. Yeah. And so part of my role was helping her you know, accept her healing ability. Mm -hmm. And then from that point on, we joined together in a Mm -hmm. spiritual adventure. And both of us have now we've been all, you know, many different sacred places. And so we were brought together. But for me, because I come from a completely different world, I've always helped people. I have a master's degree in counseling. Mm -hmm. I knew from a very early age that I wanted to help people. I don't have the gifts that she has, but I do feel I have the gifts of 
empathy and compassion and you know people always come to us for different issues i'm an executive coach i'm a professor uh, teaching business at the graduate level and leadership and so i do a lot of different things in my life because my mission uh, i actually have a mission statement is to be a beneficial presence on this planet wow. and but i'm the type that gets bored easy so i lo- i do it in a lot of different ways yeah. one of the ways i do it is an author mm-hmm. so that's why we authored this book so i've i've authored or co-authored a total of five books. So what I'm doing now, my very first book that I did like 10 years ago, is called Finding Sane Relationships Mm -hmm. in a Crazy World. And so what I'm doing is I'm going back to that book and now adding a lot of exercises because I think a lot of people, you know, how do you get rid of your emotional baggage? You know, so I believe that you're the foundation of all relationships in your life. Mm -hmm. So if you work on yourself, your relationships are going to be better, whether they be romantic relationships, family relationships, friends. And so I think a lot of people want to do better with their lives. They just don't have the tools. And so what I'm doing is going, adding all these exercises. And so, um, in the next few months, I'm going to be releasing the second edition of that book. And so okay. it's a way of like, how do I help people? You know, I'm not here to tell anybody what to do, right. but how can I help people and give them tools to make their life better? Right. Maybe when you release the book, we can do another episode all about the yeah. book. Yeah. Hey, I'm 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 game. I'm I'm open. You know, <laughs> I just really appreciate you too. I appreciate yeah. you guys because providing a platform that's so needed. You know, for so many people are searching out there. So many people feel alone, mm-hmm. feel lost. So having these conversations is something that can help so many. So so um, thank you. We yeah. appreciate thank you, you guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like we love, we were excited to be here today. We were super excited to meet with you guys today. Really? We've yeah. Been, and since we met you. We were a little worried just because we've been moving. So mm-hmm. we were like pretty Tired. stressed out, but yeah. we've. We were just like, no, we have to do this today. Cause like, I was so stressed yeah. all week. I I was just telling <laughs> so her I've been stressed. like in a shitty mood all day, and and I, I I told her I was worried. I want I wanted to be like your full potential. I didn't want to bring yeah. my bad energy here. Same. I wanted to show up being my best version of myself for you guys. Yeah. But I, I didn't even really have to think about it because honestly, just seeing you guys kind of just brought me, it brought my my spirits back <laughs> I up. Think yeah. Both of us. <laughs> yeah. Like as I was driving here, I was just like, okay. I hope, like, I'm going to be enough. I hope, like, my energy is going to be there. And, like, yeah, just seeing you guys and just, like, your conversation is just, like, it it brought both of us up. You're both healers. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) There's one thing that this has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but I'll probably forget because I Say it. Um, (laughs) Cynthia told me this, I don't know, this year, last year, uh, I was having personal problems because, you know, I was just— taking on all this shit and she goes jenny you can't carry their water for them and i was like the hell does that mean and then i thought you know here we're carrying two buckets of water plus our stuff right right drop the damn buckets and don't carry it for them anymore because we can't do that because if we do that for every person around us, there will be nothing left of us. And we always have to save a part of us so that we can transplant it. Because sometimes people just suck the life out of you. Yeah, And you suck know? the and There's energy vampires, we yeah. call them. <laughs> They're yes. drama people That's that true. like you, you walk away and like, ooh, yeah, like <laughs> I, I feel like... I, I felt like crap. Yes, and <laughs> you need a nap. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. But so when you you're feeling that way, or if somebody tries to like put something on you, just know I'm not carrying your water. Yeah. You don't have to tell them that. You tell yourself that, and just leave those buckets there. You carry your own damn water. Yeah, you know. But that was that was so simple, and that's so profound. Yeah, when you think about it, you know, we don't have to carry theirs. We can help them. But we don't have to carry it. And, and I think that's part of our native indigenous beliefs is this simplicity. Right. You know, the, the opposite of being so complicated True. is let's go back to the old ways and simple ways. Because for us, we we're taught that everybody's connected. Mm-hmm. We're connected to 
everything that's ever been, everything that ever will be. Mm -hmm. And when our leaders make decisions, we consider seven generations in the past, which are ancestors, and think about seven generations in the future. Imagine if our leaders did that. We wouldn't be having this climate crisis. They'd be saying, okay, it's not just about me. It's in a more holistic view. How do we save this planet for the future? Right. So sometimes the the simple ways are the best. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, as I always say, I don't know what the hell the theory of relativity is, but I know it's there. Yeah. But I do you live know. It. Yeah. <laughs> but I do know that if we stay on this path that we're on, on this journey, on the spiritual <clears throat> journey that we're on, and, you know, and people like you, we just bring them into the fold. And... And you see what's right for you. And as long as we can show you this, you pick what you want. Because you have to pick what's right for you and what's right for your family. Mm -hmm. But when you do it with, uh, when we do our ceremonies, it's with love and grace and gratitude. Yeah, And that's the only way you can live. I mean, you know, yeah, not everything's going to be right all the time. But there's a hell of a lot more right than there is wrong. Yeah. And and if we don't carry that those buckets of crap, then we're okay. Um when we did a we did a podcast before, uh and we were we did the big blue tsunami. Uh when Georgia was you remember the, the senator was running Warnock was running against that that football player guy, I can't remember his name, Kent Kemp or something. So every week we would come on and we'd say, come on, the blue tsunami, because we wanted the thing to turn from, uh, okay, I'm a Democrat, from Republican to Democrat. (laughs) And every week we prayed on it, and he won. Yes! (laughs) <laughs> we were like the blue tsunami came through because we were because all the states were red back there. We right. wanted to make them mm-hmm. blue because you know how they hate California. Yeah, yeah. So everyone hates California. Well, but we don't. Know? I don't pray to manipulate anything. I do. No, I, <laughs> I, I pray for more love in this world, mm-hmm. more compassion, more acceptance, like general things. Everything in in life has a duality, mm-hmm. right? The opposite of dark is light. Mm-hmm. Opposite of love is hate. And so what I try to focus on is bringing more things that I would like to see into this world. Right. Like the like the perseverance of truth. Yes. Right. Yeah. The real truth. Yeah, the real not truth. Not the made up shit bullshit. Right. Truth. Yeah, the not the manipulation. And the real truth is nature. Yeah. Because once again, nature does not True. lie. That's one thing about the ceremony that also is very is very uh like powerful is that the, there's n- there's very few abstractions. Uh-huh. It, there's nothing there's nothing that's too abstract. It's very real. It's all things that are grounded in in nature and Mother Earth and just like real existence. It's simple. Yeah, yeah. it's simple. It makes sense. Like the directions you brought up the quadrants, and the, I can't stop thinking about how you brought up how quadrants is kind of like a thing, mm-hmm. like the directions right. and. Even yeah. the dimensions themselves is everything. Well, four is a sacred number for yeah. for most indigenous people. Yeah, you brought that up too during the ceremony. I was kind mm-hmm. of thinking about because she <laughs> she loves the number five, and like it was my passcode from. It still is my passcode for my. Phone, oh, so. great! You just told everybody yeah. your passcode. It's cool. <laughs> no one's gonna take it out. There. There's nothing on there. <laughs> you can have my debt. <laughs> <It's a> debt. <laughs> yeah, take it. <laughs> um, I actually like the number five. I like twenty two. I like eleven. Those are my numbers. Okay, so I play those numbers on roulette table. (laughs) Those are my roulette numbers. Four is my sacred number. (laughs) I do. I play five, seven, 11, and 22 on the roulette table. And I usually win, too. Oh, okay. I'll try next. My birthday is 11, 22, so that's probably why I just gravitate towards those numbers. But I also like, like, patterns and repetition of numbers. Okay. Like prime Numbers or whatever, like three, six, nine, whatever the hell that is. Yeah. That was on a 
Barbara Streisand movie. That's why I know the prime number. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> the, <laughs> the mirror has many faces or something like that. I just love that movie. Okay, they've never heard of it. I've never I heard know, of it. I'm like, and oh, I've never I'm seen it. <laughs> I've seen Meet the Fockers. She's in that. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. She, yeah. Her and Dustin Hoffman. She was really good. <laughs> the Fockers. <laughs> I, I kept thinking, what the hell did they say? <laughs> I roll it back. <laughs> I know. His name is Gaylord. <laughs> <laughs> that was an intentional play on words. Yeah. <laughs> it and it threw me off. Okay. okay. Ask us anything. We'll answer you anything. Oh, wait, wait. We were, we were on Cynthia. So okay. we <laughs> talked about we talked about Jenny and what she's focusing on. Yeah. Okay. I'm and, sorry. Yeah. Well, I guess you did kind of yeah, cover it. That's the... why I didn't want to interrupt it because she was just like on a flow. Yeah, you guys are flowing so great. Interrupt. Um, but you can still fo- uh, go over what you're you're focusing on now and we can kind of talk about your guys' books. So right now I'm actually focusing a lot on the native indigenous communities. So I come from two cultures. I'm Latina from my dad's side. My grandparents came from Mexico a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. And then on my mom's side, I'm Cherokee from Oklahoma. So for growing up in LA, I didn't really feel like I fit in in, on my Latina side because I don't speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. And then on my native side, I felt like I didn't really fit in because I wasn't on the reservation. Mm. And so as I as I get more mature and wiser, now I see the beauty in both cultures. Right. And so for whatever reason, since I got my native name, uh, my Cherokee name, Lion Mother, I'm being pulled to serve the native community. So I'm chair of the, what's called Salagi LA, Cherokees of Los Angeles, Last week, I was just on NBC National News, um, the ra- Racial Day of Healing, um, giving the indigenous perspective. Mm. And uh, Jenny and I were talking about this earlier. So the woman that, um, the news anchor that asked me a question, you know, she said, you know, of all the things she could have asked me, she said, well, I am a woman from white privilege and my ancestors came on the Plymouth from you know, the book boat right after the Mayflower Second and I boat. feel guilty. What should I do about it? <laughs> so I'm, I'm thinking in my mind, because they didn't yeah. give us the questions ahead of time. So I'm thinking Weird. in my mind, really? You want me to tell you, tell you how you could feel better? <laughs> so I, so I really just pivoted yeah. and talked about healing from a native okay. perspective and how we just want the truth acknowledged. And the truth is natives have gone through nothing less than genocide in this country. And yeah. until we start acknowledging, so not only genocide, but a concerted effort to strip us from our culture right. mm-hmm. through boarding schools. The, you know, the United mm-hmm. States government owned 400 boarding schools with the intention of really stealing the kids. A lot of kids were stolen, put yeah. in these schools, and t- stripped them from their culture. So until we really acknowledge our the history or our perception of our, what we went through, then how do you start the healing? Yeah. So mm-hmm. all that to say, I'm working on a lot of different things, especially in the Native community, to really just have a voice, Mm -hmm. a seat at the table Mm -hmm. in different platforms to be able to acknowledge. And, you know, we've also done a lot of work around sexual trauma. Right. Mm -hmm. And for me, the very first step in sexual trauma is really acknowledging that it happened. Because, and that's both in Latino culture and Native culture. You know, for the Native culture, 50% of the women will either be physically abused or sexually abused. Okay. That's one out of every two. Yeah. In the Latino culture, we don't even know because nobody talks right. about it. Yeah. It's something that, you know, they, you sweep under the rug and because usually the sexual trauma uh, occurs by somebody that you know or a family right. member. Mm-hmm. And so you can't talk about it. So everybody knows it's there. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's not just... Shame. Yeah, it's, right. it's not yeah. just women, it's, it's men too. Yeah. And so for us, that's what which um, drove us to write another book called Yo Tambien, Stories of Healing and Hope, yeah. around that having that conversation. Let's rip off the Band-Aid and start the conversation. So to me, healing starts with acknowledgement. Right. Yeah, And it's if you don't talk about it in families, mm-hmm. then it didn't happen. Pretty yeah. much. That's yeah. how they feel, I guess. Well, that's how Terrible. the family members will yeah. feel. Yeah, and you know, let's start Also, not, I just yeah. want to acknowledge how, how well you flowed with, like, the questions that I had for you, I'm so proud. Like, I'm so happy. Thank you so much. Cynthia. It's going great. <laughs> we, we read. Well, I do want to say one more thing on the sexual yes. trauma because mm-hmm. it's complicated. Yeah. So, uh, you know, 
it and a lot of people say, oh, well, why are they talking about it now? Yeah. It happened so many years yeah. ago. Well, it's because our defense mechanism is to bury it. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had a lot of sexual trauma in my life. I mostly talk about being violently raped when I was 17. But a couple of weeks ago, my uncle called me to tell me that my cousin died. And so I started thinking. And then I, what, I, what came up for me is that particular cousin used to babysit me. When I was nine years old, I was sexually traumatized by him. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of glad he was dead. But, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but it was like I had buried that yeah. somewhere and not even thought about it until my uncle told me that he oh, had wow. passed. Yeah. So there's so much that, you know, we have. A, right. And a lot of people, you know, I, I'm no, nothing special because so many people and we don't know the numbers in the latino community because of the shame the guilt and so for me the first thing i had to do is say it out loud say yeah. say that it happened and then the most powerful tool that i had was forgiveness yeah. so i forgave the person that caused the trauma pretty early on but the missing key for me, and it, it didn't heal until this really happened, is I had to forgive myself. Mm -hmm. Because in the society, we're taught that like if you're sexually traumatized, you brought that on. You mm -hmm. caused right. that. Yeah, and so right. in my mind, I was feeling guilty about all this and didn't even know it. So once I forgave myself, then I was truly able to heal from the sexual trauma. Mm -hmm. Until and I remember that my, about my cousin a couple weeks yeah, ago that like I had forgotten about. Yeah. yeah, like forced reflection on yeah. it. And for me, my godchild was the right. one that brought me into this. Right. And um, it was within her family. Right. And so she was a little girl. And uh, she would call me every week. Can I call you? Yeah, okay. And, you know, and then she, she changed. Something just kind of clicked over and I kept saying, you know, and I won't say her name. What's wrong? Nothing. Nothing, and you know, a couple of weeks, and then I she just sounded terrible. I go, and I knew her parents weren't there. Mm -hmm. And I said, Is there somebody in the house that is hurting you? She goes, No. I said, What? And I, I, I thought, Well, she failed school. She smoked a cigarette. You know, I, I, I was putting out all this stuff because, right. and I never thought to think she was raped. Because that, so that's the last thing I said. And she said yes, and then I thought, oh, shit, now what do I say, you know? Mm -hmm. I opened the can of worms for her, yeah. and I told her, you know, you're going to have to— uh, And how old was she at the time? Um, at the time, she was 11. My gosh. No, no. She, no I'm sorry. She was—when she told me, I think she was like 13. She was 13. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, your mom and dad are coming home tonight. I go, you need to tell her. Because she was up north, I said, because I will fly up there. Right. And um, when she said it, it kind of broke up their family. And uh, I flew her down here. Uh, it was during a spring break, and I said, you need to come down here. And so I flew her down here, and our healing place was in Laguna. Go to the beach. I go, there is nothing bigger than the ocean. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, what you're carrying could not be as heavy as what's in the ocean. Right. Let's just put all of that in the ocean. Let's let it wow. go. You know, just put it out there. Um, and <clears throat> I told her, you have to forgive yourself, Mia. Because it, and for most people, I think, and, and thank God this never happened to me, is it's not your fault. It's not your fault. The person that did that to you was goddamn broken. You know, I mean, they're sicker than you are. What they've caused you to, you know, all that trauma that they've given you. Could you imagine how bad? They, I, I would think they must feel terrible. And maybe um, they don't feel terrible, but they know they've done something wrong. They know it. Let them carry their water. Right. They know it. And, and but, one of the reasons why we started, the, you know, the the book uh, Yo Tambien, Stories of Healing and Hope, it was right around the Me Too movement was yeah. coming out, mm -hmm. which was fine. You know, I support the Me Too movement all the way. Yeah. But what we were looking at with the Me Too movement is sexual trauma in the workplace. Yeah. Right. And so we said, okay, that's it happens in the workplace, but for us, it happens at home. Oh, yeah. So we family. started yeah. the conversation, and we did a whole healing circle. 
prayer circle in at um, the historic state park yeah. in downtown LA and we brought people together and we prayed for the healing of our community. We prayed for the healing of people that had experienced the trauma and we prayed for people that caused the trauma. Yeah, and people right. were like, why are you praying for them? They should right. be in jail. And I said, you know what? You know, people that are have caused the trauma usually have been traumatized themselves. Yeah. Right. And so it's like, how do we cycle. break this cycle yeah. of of pain for everybody? Because people don't realize when you're sexually traumatized, it's, you know, maybe the person that causes the trauma, you know, they walk away the next day, don't even think about it. This sticks with people for many, 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 many Probably years. Probably all their life. Yeah. Yeah. So it's about, for us, it was about healing the community and having the difficult conversations. Yeah. I was yeah. I was going to follow up with the question of like, why was it important for you guys to title it in Spanish? Oh. To differentiate ourselves from, from the Me Too movement. That's right. Specifically for our community. And we also intentionally included a man's story yeah. because it happens to men. So yeah. if you look at the stories, it's not like, oh, this happened to me. It was, how did I heal? Right. We yeah. wanted to share with people, you can heal. It's not easy, but there are people that have healed and been very, very successful and not let that one experience dominate their lives. Right. I, I like that perspective because um, I think sometimes highlighting the fact that you are a victim doesn't really teach or, or provide anything for people who have gone through it or who are going through it. I, I like that highlighting the healing part and the acceptance and forgiveness. That's really powerful because... That's what people want to relate to. I think it's too it's too easy to say it happened to me. Right. It happened like it, it happened to me too. And sometimes people want the attention for it. Not because they just want attention, but obviously they want someone to acknowledge that yeah. they've been hurt. Yeah. It's real. But yeah. it's and it is real. Yeah, yeah. it's real. But I th I like the the part of that you're focusing on this this is how I've healed, this is how I'm healing. This is how I'm going to continue to heal. And this is this is something you can learn from. Right? Yeah. And it's, to heal yourself. It's, it's putting the light because what they've been carrying this whole time is darkness, mm -hmm. sadness. Let's turn on that light for them mm -hmm. so that they can see the light and they can go to it because they can heal. Right. It just depends on how bad you want it. And it was never your fault. Right. You were in the wrong place at the wrong time. And I had to be very vulnerable to share that experience. I remember the yeah. first time that I talked right. about it publicly, because I do a lot of public speaking, I was speaking at a women's conference, and it was in March. In front of 500 women, I got on stage, and as a part of my story, I mean, I talked about all the other amazing stuff that I've done, but then I talked about all that, you don't know where it came from, and I shared that. Right. And so after... The, I finished speaking after the conference was done. I had a line of women. I mean, and I'm like, what? Because I, you know, I always judge how well I speak based on the line after, right? <laughs> so I had a line of women, and they, every single woman came up and was crying and said, it happened to me too. Thank you for sharing your yeah. story. So then I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm onto something here. People need to be heard. Right. People want this. And and again, that's why I have to say it from a healing perspective, not just I don't want I didn't I don't give the details yeah. of it because yeah. it's not important. Right. What's important is that I was able to work through it and heal, you know, through my spiritual connections, through my sisterhood, through my, you know, friends and family and all the support mm -hmm. that I was able to get to the other side. Yeah. It's and like, uh, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, um, I'm, I was sharing the, your story with my mom and she really resonated with it and like, she really, she doesn't know how to listen to my podcast. And <laughs> even though I tell her, I can show her, she still doesn't know how. Um, but she did say she's really going to, she wants to hear this one because of the story that I shared with her um, from your book, from your guys' book. Yeah. And like, it just, you know, she really connected with it. And I'm just really glad that we're doing this. Yeah. And I'm really glad that we're talking about this right now. <laughs> and it's important. It, uh, and you know what? I don't even know how all 10 of us got together. Uh, 
well, we knew each other, and we maybe knew two other people. Yeah. Well, I don't know how the hell the other ones got there. <laughs> I mean, I think we, did we interview people? No. <laughs> Let's get some. I don't know. All of a sudden, we had 10 people. Yeah. And, yeah, and it was like wonderful because everybody has a different story. Yeah. We're all you know, everybody wants to heal. Everybody, we're we're all going to the same place. We're just taking a different avenue to get there. Right. You know, and so it was so powerful. And you know, I'm not a writer, and a couple of other people weren't writers there. But just for them to be so brave and to tell their story, it moved me so much right. that I was so proud of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we took a picture, all of us together. And when I looked at everybody there, I thought, oh, my God, these were people from all walks of life. And yet they experienced the same thing. And I could see how they wanted to heal. And that was so moving to me mm -hmm. that they were so brave to put their... That's a brave thing to put it down on a book. Right. You know? Yeah. And, and since yeah. then, we've done healing. So we, we partnered with the East Los Angeles Women's Center. Oh, yeah, we did. And we went and did a whole a, um, workshop for them. Yeah. And so Amazing. it's about, you know, to me, it's planting them the seeds out there. Mm. Whoever's supposed to receive those seeds, we hope that well, they'll water it. Right. And really share it with others like you, you know, sharing it with your mom. Because... It's a bigger problem or bigger issue than any of us would like to admit. Right. And I want to dive in a little more to, I mean, not just Latino culture, but I do want to like talk about that because it's something that we're so ashamed to talk about. And it happens within the family with girls and boys and like everyone's scared to talk about it. And what's your guys is like, do you have any stories or experiences on that? Well, as I said, for my godchild, when she opened it up to her family, it split her family. Right. It absolutely split them. And um, I know her parents, and I really love her parents. And I had to walk a real fine line on that. Right. Because I wanted to say, what the fuck is the matter with you? Help her. Yeah. And yet they turned around. Yeah. And I'm like... Well, and that's why I felt responsible for her as a younger girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And 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 her and I are very close. Uh, to this day, we're very, very close. Um, and she said, you know, she was at the point of almost taking her life. Mm. You know, and I can't understand how, if you see that your child is hurt, how you could not want to help them. You know, uh, I don't get that. I mean, I've never had any children, but I'll be damned if I'm going to let somebody hurt yeah, my child. Right. Shit, I'll take you to the wall. But it, it does I, break up families because does. I did have a young woman came up to me and she shared her story that she, you know, she was being uh, sexually molested by one of her uncles right. and she did tell her parents. The parents called the cops and the uncle went to jail. Yeah. And she wow. had to testify. And she was oh a young God. girl at that God. time. And it split the family. And so yeah. the family, that they don't talk to each other because, you know, it's her fault she put the uncle in jail. They didn't look right. at like he did anything fault. wrong. And man. so the, fa it, the families are torn apart. And she says it'll never be repaired. Right. And so it's hard. Yeah, it's, And it's such a common story yeah. to hear. Like, I, I've heard that story so many times. It's, all, it's the uncle. It's the dad. It's yeah. the grandpa. Right. And then it's like... A lot of the times, you you hardly ever hear that the family actually, you know, calls the cops on them. Like, it's always right. usually silenced right. or, like, you know, that didn't happen. You're just being mm -hmm. dramatic or, like, and you so, know. Sometimes it's even, it's it's just so complicated. Like, I I went through something myself when I was a kid. Yeah, I didn't talk about it with my family until I was probably in like my mid, my mid twenties, mm. and it's because it was someone related to my dad. Mm. It was a woman who did it, and now like my my family is I I'm not that I don't feel welcome. It's just that I I can't interact with that side of the family. It's awkward. I have a very awkward, strange relationship with my dad's mom, and my grandma. Mm -hmm. and I mentioned earlier my my grandma who passed. That was my mom's mom. I was super close to her. She like helped raise me and all the trauma that happened 
to me happened in my other grandma's house. Uh-huh. It was like allowed, it was enabled. And like you said, it's ingrained in our culture like to sweep things under the rug, yeah. to be afraid of the consequences. And it, it's, it's really like, it, I don't even have the words to articulate how insane it is that when you become the victim of sexual trauma, it's like a curse in a way because it, it's not just you have to deal with like the trauma then you have to deal with the potential fallout the aftermath with the with the gro- growing with it like your goddaughter you mentioned yeah. she's considering taking her own life and it's yeah. like she now she has to deal with abandonment because her parents don't want to help her yeah cuz they didn't support her or nurture her through yeah. this whole thing i i feel so bad for children and and yeah. what you're saying is like I can feel that, you know? Yeah. My grandma's dying right now from cancer. Mm-hmm. And I, my my dad is like torn by it. Mm-hmm. And it's so difficult for me to be there for him because I have such a strained, complicated relationship with his mom and yeah. with that side. I, can't, I don't even go around. I haven't been to her house. She's moved multiple times in the past decade. I, I've never been there. You know, like it's it's very, I don't know. I feel like a lot of it is cultural in a way. Yeah. But you, but you have to realize that you have to take care of you. Oh yeah. Because if you don't, then, then they succeeded taking you away from you. Right. Yeah. yeah then they've taken your Too life. Too much power. Yeah. And you don't yeah. give that to them. And everyone suffers if you yeah. don't, because you know. Before I talked about it, I was I was suffering for it. I was not like being honest to myself. I wasn't taking care of myself. And you see that happen to to. You see it happen. I mean, obviously, I'm a man, and you, you don't hear it as often about men. Right. You see it though with women, and you even see it in a sense like the way it's portrayed, even in entertainment. It's like the the trauma gets romanticized. The the it happened to me gets romanticized, but not the the healing doesn't get romanticized. And that's right. the part that you guys are focusing on. And yeah. I think that is that is the that that's, is what you're bringing to so, the world. So and Jesse, let me just say thank you. Thank yeah. you for being vulnerable, and thank you for reminding us. A lot of people think it's the men that that cause the sexual trauma. No. You know, it's it's could be either way. It's yeah. somebody in a position of power that yeah. takes right. advantage of a vulnerable person yeah. for their own benefit or pleasure. Mm-hmm. So, thank you for reminding us that yes, women can you know be. Uh, perpetrators as well but right. thank you for being a man and standing up and sharing that because I know it takes a lot it takes a lot for women but you know men are actually because held to a different standard in our society yeah. right. like they don't talk about it because you don't even talk about emotions anyway so you're certainly not going to talk yeah. about trauma yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right yeah yeah so and the most important the most important important thing on that is the healing yeah yeah, because after that, nothing else matters. Yeah. yeah. So no. have you healed? Have I healed? Because we would like to help you if you haven't yeah. offline, not today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I would say that I, 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 with my experience, I feel I've healed. I've, I've accepted it. I've forgiven. I've distanced myself from the part of myself that was, was in pain. Yeah. I, I'm this, I mean, she's known me since I was a kid in she tells me all the time, like, I, you're not even the same person I met when you were that whatever age and even at in your 20s. And I've gone through so many changes in my life and so many – I've gone through so much other trauma that I've kind of been forced to change and to heal. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to have her in this relationship I have. I wouldn't be able to have the stability I have. I was kind of forced into it because the alternative was – Things that probably are not good for me, you know? Self-destruction. And self-destruction. Yeah. And I was already heading down that path and actively pursuing those types of things. And I had to kind of intervene into my own life. And the only way I could do that was to ask for help. So, you know, forgiveness is powerful, like I already said. Yeah. But it's okay, forgiving the person that caused the trauma, forgiving yourself. But the third thing I didn't mention is is forgiving the people that you thought should have protected you. Oh, oh. that's important. That's like that's the important. part because, you know. That took a while. Yeah. Right, because it's like, because it, cause most of the time it happens, you know, when we're under 18 and there yeah. should have been somebody there to protect. So it's forgiving those people and they might not even have known, they might have looked the other way, whatever. So there's, you know, forgiveness, there's like a triangle there. Yeah. 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 And you know what? Uh I know we say uh, that may take a while, but sometimes time is not on our side, mijo. Yeah. And um, 
once you do that, then you've let go of all the ugly. Yeah. And and it may be something that you might do a little sooner than later. Mm-hmm. And that's almost a um, you're doing it for yourself. Yeah. You're doing it for yourself. And let me give you a exercise that I recommend all the time, and I've done it myself with forgiveness. If the person, if you don't want to talk to the person, mm-hmm. or if they have made their transition, write a letter. Write a letter because the important thing is getting the emotions out mm-hmm. for forgiveness. Because we talked, we started talking about energy. Well, emotions have energy and they stay in the ce- our body cells. Oh, yeah. So it's like if you need to forgive somebody that you don't want to talk to, but you need to forgive, write that person a letter, putting all put all those emotions out, and then use a white candle and burn it. Oh, wow. So you're releasing it. Yeah. I think that's. Actually, very interesting advice. I think I kind of have to take it because... You don't have to take it. I, I, feel, I feel, I honestly feel like I'm obligated to because the fact that I, I even know... The, if I really wanted to, I could speak to this person. Sure. But knowing that there are people that I know and love who have gone through worse sexual trauma who can't even who don't even know the people mm-hmm. who did this or who, who can't even remember, don't know... It's like I I have I have an obligation in a way to to yourself to myself and yeah. to the people I love who have experienced that type of pain. Like I, I need to do that because I've never even thought of that. I've never even considered that you could just write it out and uh-huh. like you said, like well, I had to do that with my parents, both yeah. parents. Yeah. You know, one right. when, when my dad and he did not he didn't cause that cruel trauma, but I had issues there. Yeah, and then with my mom. So you know, she wasn't asking for forgiveness. But I wrote a letter thanking her for for the you know allowing me to you know forgive her. Right. Yeah. And thank you for sharing. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want you to know that I'm here to support you in any way you need. I appreciate you guys. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, when I'm doing like Reiki healing, uh, and most women, uh, when I get to their um, okay, this sounds silly. When I get to their uh, root chakra, where their their where their personal stuff is, right? You know, for women, right? Um. Yeah, we know where it's at, uh, yeah, Jenny. Right <laughs> well, you know, a lot of times women hold that anger in in their their um, say it, yeah, <laughs> in their women parts, and that Thank causes uh, sometimes cancer. Oh my because, gosh! Because when we hold anger, what's anger? Anger's ugly. Anger's mm-hmm. hate, and. If you hold that in your body, the only thing that it can make is ugly. And so you have to release that. And for many women that I have worked on, and I don't even know what their problem is, but they're stuck there. (laughs) And I'll I'll just say, well, there's something here. And boy, (laughs) the waterworks come out. And I'm like, shit, I shouldn't have said anything, you know. But I realized they came because they needed to, to be healed on that part Mm -hmm. and you have to almost give them permission to let it go right don't carry it with you anymore once again carrying somebody's water and the other was chakra that women have issues with is their throat chakra because they're silenced yeah society silences as women like Mm -hmm. you don't have an opinion you shouldn't speak up and so their energy gets stuck in their throat chakra and you can feel it like sometimes it feels like a root when I'm pulling it out, it feels like a root. Like like one time I was like, what the hell do you have in here? You know, and I kept pulling and I realized, wow. It, and I would have never thought that of this person that I was working with. I never would have thought that. And when we got to it, it was, it was such a release for her. So I was going to follow up with a question on how do you think you're – culture and spirituality has helped you heal with the traumas? Um, It's made us stronger women. It's allowed us to help people that can't help themselves. We're strong. Our people are strong people. We we were, Yaki's were never defeated. I'm telling that to you. (laughs) But we're strong people. We're, um, my native name is Sister Weeping Willow because I'm a real big Tiona. I cry for everything, right? And I thought, oh, they named me that because I was always crying. But that, and they and they told me, 
I go, did, did you do it because I'm always crying? She said, no. She goes, because you're like a willow. I go, what does that mean? She goes, you can bend, but you will never break. And I thought, wow. So that is my name that I was, that was my given name, is Sister Weeping Willow. And I, and I see that. I can see where a tree can go like this and it can go like this, but you always come back. And that's the strength that we have. And us as Latinos, we have, we have the most beautiful culture. Uh, when we were growing up, I always thought my mom told me we were Mexican because I knew we were Yaqui and Mexican, and I heard Mexican. And so one time my mom said something. I go, well, yeah, because we're Mexican. She goes, what? And I said, what? And she was Mexican. What's that? I go, I thought because we were Mexican and, and you know, and Yaqui, that that was mixed. Oh, mija, it's Mexican. I go, <laughs> whole time, like, you know, till I was like maybe in the sixth grade, I thought it was a Mexican. <laughs> I know how stupid, huh? <laughs> it makes sense. What about, <laughs> what what about you, Cynthia? How do you think um, your culture and spirituality has, has healed you or helped you heal? Well, I think it's had everything to do with my healing. Yeah. Because part of my, especially the Native culture and spirituality is really having that understanding that it's really the creator and the ancestors are control in control. So it helped me surrender. And so once I surrendered mm -hmm. and gave up the need for control, then going with the flow, the, the, peop, the creator and ancestors put the right people in my life. You know, it puts the healing in my life. So it's had everything to do with my healing. Yeah. Do you have any advice for people that are looking to tap into their spirituality or even just, you know, um, any advice for people who have been sexually assaulted or have experienced that trauma? Just go ahead and free flow with any advice. Um, I think when you're look, many people are looking for something. Uh, and I think what you need to look for is not to complicate it because life can be very complicating is to simplify what you're looking for because you don't have to go to Mount Shasta. You don't have to go anywhere. It's you are the vessel for your healing. You are the vessel for your spirituality. So it's here. Just tap into it because we're perfect beings you know, we mess up a bunch of stuff, but we we no matter how you came, we're perfect. Don't look, you know, look in inside. Look for the goodness. Look for the love. And if you look through eyes that way, then that's clear. It, it's clear. But if you look for, you can look for that thing that you'll never find. And you'd just be chasing your tail. So I think um, that's why we say uh, we believe in nature because she doesn't lie. Yeah. So I think for me to make recommendations, first recommendation is buy our books. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sacred Ceremony and Rituals for Today's World for the spiritual part to help you develop your spiritual practice. But Yo Tambien, Stories of Healing and Hope, I actually give five steps of healing in that. Book. And as I mentioned, the first step is really, you know, the acknowledgement. So if, you, if you've been carrying this burden around, find a safe space to be, to be able to acknowledge it and say it, whether it be a friend, who, who, somebody that you trust, that you could say it out loud. And once, you know, once you say it, then it's like, oh, okay, you know, that I've, I've released it. And then take the steps, well, you know, like I said, taking the steps of, of forgiveness and really, you know, believing in yourself because it really takes a toll on your self-esteem, your self-worth, and really, you know, at the end of the day, we all, and Jenny talked about this earlier, we all need to focus on our individual wellness, what our wellness looks like. You know, I always say that, like, when you're, you know, in an airplane and they, they do the safety drill and they said, right. if the oxygen mask comes down, put it on yourself first, because what happens, especially Latinas, we put it on everybody else. We, we're caregivers, so we give, give, give so much that we don't have anything to give for ourselves. And so we have to make 
if you're a man or woman, you have to make your individual wellness a priority. And so once you do that, you'll find that the creator, God, universe, ancestors will put the right people and take an, an active step. You know, listen to podcasts like this one, yeah. you know, read books, get out there and you'll find that the information's out there. You just need to be open to your own healing. Absolutely. Yeah. Smile because somebody's going to smile back and they may need that, you know, they yeah. may need that smile. Um, so smile a lot. It's free. Do you guys have any um, events or projects that you guys are working on or anything coming up in the future? Well, I... Or where can we find you? Here? No. <laughs> <I'm> just <kidding. laughs> You're just going to stay here. Uh, no. <laughs> um, well, this is just something... We're going to go to uh, New Mexico again Ooh. in April, but that's uh, for the grand entry when all the Native Americans go there. Oh, but nice. we're going to go to Taos and Santa Fe. I know I shouldn't be saying all this stuff, right? But we are. <laughs> She's about our vacation. Yeah. So our vacation is, <laughs> in the last couple of years, we've done what we call spiritual vacations. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so the Gathering of the Nations is the largest powwow in the world. In the world. And so what the grand entry is, is when all all the dancers enter the arena. So you're going to have over a thousand native dancers come into the arena. And the I haven't been yet, so I'm excited. And just the energy, because I watched on YouTube. Right. <laughs> and I'm like so excited. So that, but that's part of it. But, you know, for anybody that would like to get any of our books or any of my books, they're all mm-hmm. on Amazon. Correct. You can also go to my website. Why My website is my name, uh, Cynthia M. Ruiz.com. Um, I've had my website up for several years, so it has a lot of the stuff that I do and that I have been doing. And so, you know, we love connecting with people yeah. and we love helping people and getting our books and starting that process. And then if they have questions, you know, reach out through my website. And we also, the uh, Yo Tambien, we have a Facebook page for that. So we just like to show up and help people in many different ways. Yeah, we're there. If you have a question, we'll answer it. How the, be- the however the best we can, we'll answer it. There's no question that's a dumb question. And so, how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, how do <laughs> we get a hold of you, Jenny? Smoke, she wants to answer all the questions, but wait, check this out. a smoke signal. <laughs> <laughs> and what you smoking? <laughs> just go to just go to her um, website. website. She'll tell me. I'm not, <laughs> you know what? I'm like a dinosaur in the 21st century. <laughs> so you know, yeah. Send me a smoke signal. You, you're like you a know. like an entity. Like if yeah. if they're lucky enough to come across you, then they can reach you. Yeah, they can they find you. Somehow, <laughs> I, 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 I'm there, and uh, it, it, it's just something funny. Yesterday, her and I did a couple of big favors, and, and uh, I said, "Wow!" I go, "If we died today, we'd go to heaven with our boots on because <laughs> <laughs> we got lots of good karma." <laughs> yeah, just yesterday. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I want to say thank you so much for allowing us to join you here, and uh, this has been really fun. And more than that, you know. When I first met you, I said, you need to come to our, our full moon ceremony. ceremony. And I told Cynthia, I just met this couple. And, blah, 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 <laughs> you know, and I was so excited because I had this beautiful vibe from both of you. And um, it was just so, I was so happy. My heart was like smiling. Okay, the truth is we saw, we're at a, a, a art opening event yeah. and she stalked you out come on I let's did. just say the truth I did <laughs> and she's all happy yeah I did <laughs> but you know what and I'm so grateful that she did because I think you know the world of both of you yeah. and I told you this before oh. I love the fact that you show up as a couple that's healthy I'm not saying you're perfect because there's no perfect, but yeah. you know, but it, but it's perfect for you and you work together as a team. And that just warms my heart because I really find a lot of hope in the, in the younger generations Absolutely, because you guys yeah, are more are. open. You guys know what you want and you look at the world differently. Mm-hmm. So you give me hope. Yeah. Aww. Not Thank so you. tainted, you know, <laughs> Thank I you swear guys. to God. Yeah. We keep it real. I, yeah. And that's <laughs> what, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and that's what we try to do with this podcast. Just keep it real. Keep it like, real. Even when it goes wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to thank you guys for being here and showing up. And we are so happy just to have you guys here. And oh, I want to thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Because you facilitated this. I'm just, this is not my podcast. I'm just 
I know, maybe I end up talking a little bit too much, but <laughs> I get so excited. I know, I have to cut them off sometimes because I'm like, no, we need to focus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we thank both of you. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much for doing this, guys. Okay. And so, Jenny, can you pray us out? Yes, yes. I can. I want to say, okay, Creator, thank you so much for bringing these two lovely, lovely young people into our lives. And I hope with what we shared with them that they can take a little of that with them and plant those seeds somewhere else. And if, uh, if some, if anybody's listening and they get something <laughs> out of it, thank you creator for us. We're just a conduit for you. We, we have nothing special, but we connect people. And thank you very much. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I do have one final thought. Yeah. So I brought a little gift for you who doesn't like gifts. This is what we call plant medicine that we use in ceremony. I harvest this myself. I grow it organically. So this is a blend of tobacco, sage, lavender, and rosemary. I don't grow the tobacco. It's the only one I don't grow, but the rest of them. And so we do use this in ceremony. So after you write your letter... Burn it and throw this, the plant medicine into the fire to really release it. Burn it, don't smoke it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let the creator do that. And so this, is, this tells you what it is, and thank you as a party gift. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, it smells really good right now. Right? Uh, yeah. It's a fresh batch. And here. Okay. Mmm. Smells so good. Yeah, it's okay. over. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd be the first one to say something stupid.